Okay, so in this lecture, we are going to define what is meant by a permutation. So let me write a definition of permutation. So let S be a set, a finite set. Suppose I take a finite set. Later on, we will remove the word finite set also. Okay, so let S be any set. We will do that. Right? Then a function f from the set S to the set S, which is 1, 1 and on 2. On set S is called permutation on set S. Okay, so here later I will even delete the word finite, not necessarily, but we will talk about the sets S which are finite here most of the times. So suppose I choose the set S to be equal to the set, suppose one, two, three. Okay. Now I want to find a function which is a bijective function from the set one, two, three to the same set. The function should be from the same set to the same set. And it should be one, one and on two. So how many such different different functions can I draw from this set to this set? So the first function is 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3. This function will be denoted by what? This function I will denote by 1, 2, 3 goes to 1, 2, 3 itself. The second function that I can do is I can keep 1 fixed and I can send 2 to 3 and then I can send 3 to 2. So this function will be denoted by what? This function will be denoted by 1, 2, 3. 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 2. Second is, then the, the next one is I will keep 2 as it is. And I will send 1 to 3 and 3 to 1. So here I'm keeping 2 fixed. And I'm writing 1 to goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1. Then next I will keep 3 fixed. And I will interchange these two. So I will have 3 fixed as it is. And 1 and 2 will change the places of each other. 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1. In the next case, I will rotate a little bit. So I will write 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, but 3 goes to 1. So that is 1, 2, 3 goes to 2, 3 and 1. In the last step, I will do 1 goes to 2, then 2 goes to, no, sorry, 1 goes to 3 and uh, 2 goes to 1 and 3 goes to 2. So that will be 1, 2, 3 is going to what? 3, 1, 2. So these are all possible bijective functions from the same set to the same set. Okay. Right. So there is no need. There is no need of, uh, we cannot do like this, right? We cannot send 1, 2, 2 and 2, 2, 2 and 3, 2, 2 because in this case, this function will not become a 1, 1 function. This is not a 1, 1 function, right? You cannot do this also. You cannot send, send 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 also and 1 to 3 also. This is not possible because it is not a function. A function cannot do like this. A function, ha every every value in the domain has a unique value in the core domain. So we have found out that there are total six functions which are, uh, which are what? Which are bijective functions from which set? From the set with three elements. So this set all together is called as what this set is called s3 means it is set of all what is s3 it is set of all bijective functions from the set 1 2 3 to the set to the same set 1 2 3 okay Suppose I'm taking the next set is S equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I have the set S is 
one two three and four the second set is one two three four and now i want to find all the bijective function from this set to this set now you have many options with you and so how many such bijective functions can you prepare which go from the set to the set so f from the set s to the set s what is the set s the five set s is one two three four going to one two three four okay so this one has four choices one can go to either one two three or four once one goes to some element now the other three elements cannot go to three so one had how many choices one had has four choices therefore the next number two which i have so i'm supposed to map the number two that second number has only three choices it can either go to one two or four so two has how many choices two has only three choices once two is mapped to some number suppose two maps to four then this three has only two choices three can either go to one or two so three has two choices and therefore once three is mapped to some one fixed number suppose three maps to one the option left with four is that four has to map to two so therefore four has only what four has only one choice so this means the total number of choices or the total number of bijective functions will be how much so total bijective functions from the set s to s what is the set s s is 1 2 3 4 is how much it is 4 factorial and all these i mean 4 factorial means 24 and this means that these bijections i will collect together and I will put in the set which is called as S4. So I have, for example, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And how many such bijective functions can you prepare? You can prepare such 24 bijective functions. So S4 has how many elements? S4 has 24 elements. Okay. In general, now we can say that if I have the set S is equal to 1 2 3 up to n okay which is having n elements okay then how many bijective functions can i prepare from the set s to the set s how many such bijective functions will be there that set will be called as what sn what is sn sn is the set of all bijective functions from set s 1 2 3 up to n to itself okay and what is the cardinality of the set and it has how many elements it has n factorial elements okay now suppose i take suppose so suppose this is the picture of sn let me draw the picture of sn okay how many elements are there inside this set there are n factorial elements inside this set so if i choose one function f now that one function will look like this one two three up to n goes to some mappings they are they are mapping to some elements and i have a g which is another permutation every element in this set is called as permutation so g is any uh, some different element which has some different answers okay now this f composite g when i take f composite g what will happen to f composite g now we know that this f is a bijective function f is one one on two function g is also what g is also a bijective function and what is the composite of two bijective functions if i have f is which f which is bijective g which is bijective is f composite g a bijective function so yes so f composite g is also a f composite g is also bijective this means that when i find the composite of two fun these two functions that f composite g will also be some bijective function and it will again be a 
member of the set. What does this indicate me? This indicates me that if F belongs to SN and if G belongs to SN, then what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that F composite G is also an element of SN. Means if F is a permutation, means F is a bijective function on that N set, G is also a bijective function on that N set, then F composite G is also a bijective function on that set, right? Have a simple example. Suppose I'm looking at a set with three elements. Suppose I'm having one, two, three, and this is set S. So I'm talking about S3. Okay, now suppose this is F, one goes to two, two goes to one and three goes to three, this is F. Okay, and let me now take the third, uh, the th next function is G. So let me take one, two, three, two to one and three to two. This is the function G. Okay, what is F? Is F a bijection? Yes. If, is G a bijection? Yes. Can we draw the picture of F composite G? F composite G is very easy to find from this picture. So this is one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, right? Look at where is one going to. One is going to, I want to find what? I'm going to find F composite G. Now, when I find F composite G, where is one going to? So this means F of G of one. Look in the picture, what is G of one? G of one is how much? G takes one to three. So G of one is how much? Three, which is F of G of one is three. And what is F of three? Where is F taking three to? F maps three to three. So this means finally under the map F composite G, one is getting mapped to three. Okay. Can we find what is F composite G? Where, where will this two go now? I will just replace the one by two. F composite G of two. But what is G of two? G of two is under G, two goes to one. So G of two is one. And what is F of one? F of one is two. So G, this means that two goes to and we have now only one option left with us. Where must three go? Three has to go to one. Okay. This is the way we have found out what F this function is. Which function? This function is F composite G. Okay. If you have, if you look these elements of permutations as elements of uh, the symmetries of an equilateral triangle, if you understand from this person, this person F is nothing but mu three. This F is mu three because three is fixed. If you look at this particular picture, uh, this uh, particular picture is trying to tell you that this is your row two. Okay, and what is this F composite G? F composite G means mu three composite row two. And who is this particular person that we have gone? We have, you see that two is fixed. Two is going to two and therefore this person is actually nothing but mu2. So if you go in your composition tables and if you try to find out what is mu3 composite row 2, you will get it to be mu2 in the table of symmetries of an equilateral triangle. We have already discussed this in a previous video. Okay. So this means what, what I'm trying to focus on is that if you take any two permutations, the composite of two permutations is again a permutation. Who is the identity element of this particular set? of this SN, the identity element is one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three and so on, N goes to N. So this works as a identity element, means how does that permutation look? That permutation looks like this, one goes to one, two, three up to N and one, two, three up to N. So one goes to two, two goes to two, three goes to three, it's four and N goes to N. So this is your identity permutation, which takes set S to set S. And it and in short, you write that permutation in this particular fashion. One, two, three up to n goes to one, two, three up to n itself. Okay. Now, remaining thing is uh, is inverse. Okay. See, I'm trying to go towards group. 
I have closure. I will talk about associative late later. I have identity and I have to talk about inverse. Okay. If one goes to two and two goes to three and three goes to four and so on and n goes to one. Okay. This is the permutation F. Okay. What is the inverse of this permutation? In the inverse, obviously, what will happen? If one goes to two, in the inverse, what will happen? Two will go to one. If two goes to three, the inverse will be what? If two is going to three under F, then under the inverse function, three must go to two and so on. Okay. So, so what is, if N is going to one under the inverse permutation, one must go to N. This is how this will work. So this is the inverse of. If f is bijective function, you can clearly see that f is 1, 1, and onto function. Is f inverse 1, 1, and onto? Yes, right? So if f is 1, 1, and onto, f inverse exists, and f inverse is also 1, 1, and onto. So this means that firstly, closure is true. Closure holds. Means f is in Sn, g is in Sn, means f is 1, 1, and onto, g is 1, 1, and onto. F composite G is also an element of SN. Who is the identity element? Identity element is 1, 2, 3 up to N goes to 1, 2, 3 up to N. Associativity, if F, G and H are bijective, then we, do, we know that, we always know that F composite G composite H is always equal to F composite G composite H. For that, the functions need not be bijective. This composition is always associative operation. What is the inverse? If F is an element in SN, means if F is a permutation, that is F is 1, 1 and on to, then F inverse is also 1, 1 and on to. And this in returns means that F inverse is also a permutation and therefore F inverse is also in SN and not only that F composite F inverse if you make F inverse composite F and F inverse F composite F composite F inverse this will give you which permutation this will give you the identity permutation 1 2 3 up to n goes to 1 2 3 up to n okay so what is an example of uh, if I give you a permutation F Suppose in S4, so that permutation will look like what? That permutation will look like 1, 2, 3, 4. And suppose I write 2, 3, 1, 4. What is the inverse of this particular permutation? The inverse of this particular permutation will be 1, 2, 3, 4. I will go the reverse way. 1 goes to 3. 2 goes to 1. 3 goes to 2. And 4 goes to so you see, so this is also a permutation. So if F is a permutation, then F inverse is also a permutation. This is how you find the inverse of the permutations. Okay. So what we declare from the above exercise is that for the conclusion is that Sn. What is Sn? Sn is the set which contains n symbol. Uh, uh, sorry, SN is the set of what? SN is the set of all permutations from uh, N set to N set. The set containing elements 1 to 3 up to N, right? The set of all permutations. Permutation means what? 1, 1 and on to functions. From which set? From the set 1 to 3 up to N to the same set to itself. This forms a group with respect to which operation with respect to the composition operation so now it is a group and once it is a group we can find its order and what is the order order means number of elements what is the order of sn means the number of elements in sn we have seen that there are exactly n factorial elements in this particular group so Sn is a group with respect to this composition operation with how many elements? With n factorial elements. Okay. Is this group abelian? Is this group abelian? 
okay now we know that when you study the symmetries of equilateral triangle we have all that that set is called as d3 which is also same as s3 okay s3 and d3 are same what is d3 d3 is all symmetries of equilateral triangle and s3 is the set of all permutations now just now in the above part we have seen that s3 contains the same six elements rho not rho rho 1 rho 2 mu 1 mu 2 mu 3 and d3 also contains the same set right we know that s3 is not abelian because mu 1 composite rho 1 is not equal to what rho 1 composite mu 1 so this means that s3 is certainly not an abelian group okay in general when it talk about sn sn will also not be an abelian group okay the answer is sn is non-abelian now how will i show that i know that s3 is non-abelian is fine okay this this calculation has shown me that s3 is non-abelian okay but from that how can i declare that in general sn is non-abelian so what we will do i will construct a function just like mu1 remember what is mu1 mu1 was 1 going to 1 2 and 3 gets interchanged okay and what is g function i will choose g function i will take like rho1 what is rho1 rho1 function was 1 1 2 3 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1 and other symbols i will keep fixed 4 goes to 4 5 goes to 5 and n goes to n okay here also 4 goes to 4 5 goes to 5 and n goes to n so here this f is actually a part of mu1 here and this is like the identity so this will not affect it and this is like your rho1 and this is like your identity right so when i convert these functions f and g into cycles what will f look like f will look like 1 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 3 4 5 because they're going to themselves what is g looking like g in the cycle structure will look 1 2 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1 and other elements are fixed so this means this f is actually nothing but 2 3 and this g is nothing but cycle 1 2 3 who is f this is the same as mu 1 and who is g this is the same as rho 1 and we know that mu 1 composite rho 1 is not equal to rho 1 composite mu 1 and this means that f composite g also is not equal to g composite f therefore we can now declare in general that sn with respect to the composition group is what is a non-abelian group right but we know a theorem at the back of our mind that every cyclic group is always abelian we have done this theorem in our previous classes what is the contrapositive of this particular theorem the contrapositive of uh, this theorem is that not abelian implies not cyclic so since we have shown that this group is not abelian therefore by the contrapositive part now we can hence say that sn with respect to the composition operation is not cyclic so this group sn is neither abelian it is neither cyclic and what is the order of this group this is a finite group with n factorial elements